not only are you Asian, but you're Asian American. Yeah, exactly. Like, type, like, like Chinese American, just like me. Like I don't know what traditional food is, but it's like this is what's traditional to me because of how I grew up and my environment that I was in. What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Feed, Feed Me, Me Nolita. Nolita. I'm your host Raymond. And Kayla. And today we're here to check out Namwa Nolita and to meet the head chef. So come on. Namwa Nolita is a super chill, fast casual Chinese American dining experience and I'm super excited to try everything out. What's going on guys? Today we're here with Chef Calvin from Namwa Nolita. What's going on? He is the chef that's responsible for developing all these delicious dishes in front of us. Calvin, can you tell us more about the reopening and rebranding of Namwa itself? Yeah, yeah. so Namwa Nolita, which is where we're at right now, has only been here for about 11 months now. Mm -hmm. This is kind of like our newer location. It was like a test for us to see if this whole fast casual dim sum thing would work and if there was like a demand for it. So we're just here testing it out to see if we could expand possibly to open more outposts of this. You've been here for almost a year now. Yeah. And you, even since when you first opened, I'm sure it's changed since then to now. And where do you kind of see things going for Namwa and the entire community itself? For Nolita, I think it's like an awesome neighborhood. Because I grew up going to Chinatown every single weekend. So that's where my grandparents lived, right on Bayard Street. And then coming up here back then was just like nothing was going on. Now the food scene here is just like crazy. Every every week there's like something new popping up in the neighborhood. Yeah. And it's just like this community is just getting growing bigger and bigger. Especially the food community is within like the Asian Asian American guys, like you were mentioning before. With Asian American families, it was a little harder to pursue something that wasn't kind of by the book. And this is like off the beaten path where you're being a little bit more creative. Yeah, it's like myself. I was just trying to pursue something in the culinary field or something in the creative field. And yeah. I feel like people are more willing to do that now in this day and age because they realize that they can make a living off of it and they're willing to pursue their dreams. And I think that's awesome. These taro hash cakes are absolutely my favorite and the best part is they're 100% vegan. So these two right here are probably the most traditional dim sum items out of this selection at least. Mm -hmm. So this is a shrimp and snow pea leaf dumpling and this is a shrimp and pork siu mai. So this is something you would find at traditional dim sum restaurants and even at Namwa tea parlors. Like I kind of keep it classic and traditional. I don't really do anything to it. I don't think anything needs to be done to it. So these are kind of just left as is, as the dim sum options. Right here is a uh, we call it a turned up turnip cake. It's actually my mom's recipe that I stole, and then I just added a couple extra things to it to turn it up. It has a bacon exo sauce. The exo sauce what? is traditionally made, bacon? yeah, traditionally made with uh, dried shrimp and dried scallops <laughs> infused in oil. So then this one just like I added some smoked bacon to it just to add more umami flavor, add more smokiness to it, and then top it off with fried shallots, hoisin, and sky and cilantro. Wow. And inside is just dried shrimp and uh, Chinese sausage. That's yeah. And this one right here is just uh, a shrimp and pork dumpling, also topped with the bacon egg salsa, because why not? <laughs> it already has shrimp and pork inside, so we were like, fuck it, let's just add more shrimp and pork on top. There you go. <laughs> and then right here is our uh, taro hash cakes. It's kind of like my play on like a Jewish latka, so it's just shredded taro. And then we top it with our tofu white sauce as like the sour cream part of it. Wow. And then our sweet and salty plum sauce, that's kind of like the apple sauce. And then the scallions are like the chives. So that's like vegan, gluten free as well. I love how you mentioned that the turn up is um, based off of your mom's recipe. So it's kind of like your personal story. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of places don't do that. And that's really cool that it's like unique to you. It's just like my little take on it. I just changed it up a little bit and yeah. made it gluten free. Yeah. So that way it feels to the younger crowds are a little more yeah. health conscious these days. So this is named after one of the cooks here who used to eat this shit like every day. <laughs> and then so I was like, fuck it, let's just throw it on the menu. <laughs> so then it's like our miso and black bean braised minced chicken dish uh -huh. topped with our mapo tofu. Wow. Because our mapo tofu is vegan, so we don't have um, pork in it, which is usually what's made with. 
So then, if you want meat, you can just mix it with one of our other dishes, which is minced chicken. It's sloppy kim. We top it with some shaved Chinese broccoli, a little watercress, fried garlic, and uh, pickled chilies. Overall, Nam Hua has original and super inventive food options that definitely have me coming back for more. My favorite was definitely the Phoenix buns. They were so good. Oh, you guys are still here. Well, you know what? We're going to finish all this food in front of us right We're going to devour this food in You're front right. of us. You're right. about to devour this. So, I'm your host, Raymond. And I'm Kayla. Thanks for watching Feed Me Nolita. And a big thank you to Chef Calvin and Namwa. Don't forget to follow our social media down below and subscribe up there. And I'll see you guys next Monday. Bye.